Hi guys. It is getting to be a fine day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this, I hope, soon to be lovely Friday, January 24th, 2020, uh, where I have just received the great news that my offer on my little waterfront bivouac to survive the uh, collapse of global industrial civilization has been accepted. And so I've got a lot on my plate, but uh, in case you don't know who this is, since you can't see me, this is Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles, where what I do uh, pretty much every day is bring you the collapse of global industrial civilization. And since it is Friday, we're going to head over to Manga Bay. But before we do, uh, I want to send a big thank you out to two kind-hearted listeners, Kirk Hamilton and Julia Bowska for their very kind donations to this channel and anyone who has ever supported whatever it is I do on YouTube, I really, really do uh, appreciate that. And with that pleasant task out of the way, let's head over uh, to mangabay.com and uh, see what Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at mangabay.com have on their minds this week. And it has finally happened. Uh, why am I not surprised? Uh, one of Manga Bay's editors uh, has been arrested and jailed over an alleged visa violation uh, in Indonesia. You know, Manga Bay is, is the number one uh, environmental organization calling out uh, Indonesia, you know, bringing to the attention of the planet the uh, environmental destruction, mainly from palm oil, all of this corruption. Uh, and so uh, this fellow, Phil Jacobson, you, you know, is over there in Indonesia to bring us uh, news of the collapse of Indonesia and was hauled into jail. And this was before Christmas. He has been sitting in jail over an alleged uh, visa violation. You know, clearly this is a message to Manga Bay and anybody else uh, who has the courage or the foolishness, as the case may be, you know, to call out these planet eaters. Uh, if you're lucky, uh, if you're a foreign journalist, uh, you're, you're just going to get thrown in prison uh, for two or three months uh, as a, what do they call this, a, um, obviously a silencing tactic. Uh, I know there's a term for this. I'm having a senior moment. But of course, if, uh, <coughs> if Phil Jacobson was, you know, just a local uh, environmental defender living in Indonesia, he would probably be getting a bullet through his head. Uh, he has been sitting in jail since December 17th. Anyway, what a surprise. Okay, let's head over to Brazil to, uh, you've probably heard of the Belo Monte Dam, one of the biggest environmental boondoggles in, uh, in the Amazon rainforest history. And of course, this is one you, you can't even blame on, uh, you can't even blame this one on Jair Bozo Nero. Uh, the Belo Monte, I guess that was approved, you know, during Dilma Rousseff's uh, tenure. So what is the, uh, the update on this, I guess? Uh, 
maybe the two or three year update, the Belo Monte Boondoggle, Brazil's biggest, costliest dam, may be, may be unviable. The controversial, controversial Belo Monte Mega Dam in Pará State has done significant socio-environmental harm to the Zingu River and the indigenous and traditional people living beside it. And now it appears the dam may not be able to produce the electricity promised by its builders. An eventuality critics had long warned about. Project designers appear to have seriously <clears throat> misestimated the Zingu River's flow rates and fluctuations between wet and dry seasons, <coughs> while also not accounting for reductions in flow due to deforestation caused by rapidly expanding cattle ranches and soy plantations far upriver. Climate change-induced droughts are also decreasing the Zingo River flows and electricity generating capacity, and this is true uh, for any river uh, that is being dammed by these uh, BS uh, hydroelectric dams all over the Amazon uh, are, are having their flows and uh, generating capacity uh, reduced to nothing. Back in 2013, an important Brazilian panel on climate change report warned that global warming could drop water levels all across the Amazon basin, putting hydropower in serious jeopardy. And as deforestation due to agribusiness and mining spreads across the Amazon basin, now driven by the development-friendly policies of Brazilian President Jair Bozo Nero, the future for Amazon hydroelectric dams, <clears throat> their generating capacity, and investment potential looks increasingly bleak. There you go. All right, we're going to go from the Amazon rainforest to the Congo rainforest. Manga Bay, when was it? About a year ago, did an excellent, excellent uh, series of articles talking, you know, explaining the difference between planet nibbling and planet eating, this subsistence, uh, subsistence agriculture, meaning where these planet nibblers go into the rainforest, uh, you know, local farmers go into the Congo rainforest with no help from the big boys. Uh, and go in there with their machetes and little chainsaws and just like the locusts and the termites that they are with no help from the big boys, you know, the big lumber and palm oil and uh, cobalt mine, all those guys, the, uh, the planet eaters, uh, with no help from the planet eaters, the Congo rainforest is going to be obliterated off the face of this planet by the middle of the century. There will be no Congo rainforest. And here is the latest uh, research looking at the planet nibblers teaming up with the planet eaters here in the Congo rainforest. A new study has found that deforestation for subsistence agriculture often occurs near commercial logging, mining, and agricultural operations in the Democratic Republic of Congo. 
shifting cultivation, uh, you, you know, which most of the local farmers and their families are dependent upon continues to drive much of the forest loss in the Congo Basin and commercial operations have accounted for relatively little forest loss uh, so far this century, but this new study showed that around 12% of the forest lost as the area used for shifting agriculture ex expansion occurred within about three miles of these large scale ventures. What they're talking about here is that these planet nibblers, these small time guys, are taking full advantage mostly of the new roads that uh, the big guys come in with the bulldozers and all that, and they punch in all the new roads to get to their uh, places to, to eat the planet, and the planet nibblers taking full advantage of this. This is a problem uh, not limited to the Congo rainforest. Anyway... Uh, what's going on, as long as we're over there, what's going on over there in Liberia? After the death of a forest ranger during a riot, during a riot inside a national park, Liberian officials and conservation groups have changed their community <laughs> relations approach Yes, uh, we're talking about Sapo National Park, uh, one of the most important, quote, protected forests in West Africa, has a troubled past of illicit mining, hunting, and conflict between local communities and conservation efforts. Yep, I bet. Um, and again, this is a problem going on all over the planet. Uh, you, you know, this next story coming out of India is one of these damned if you do, damned if you don't stories. <clears throat> Mass tree planting along India's Calvary River has scientists worried. A plan to plant 2.4 billion trees along the Calve River has attracted the chagrin of some scientists. While scientists say the project is well-meaning, they don't believe planting 2.4 billion trees will cure the Calvary River's ills as promised. It sounds like it will suck all the water out of the river. Uh... <laughs> Yes, India's rivers are suffering from numerous issues, but researchers contend that mass tree planting is too simplistic to fix them all. We're going to hear about some mass tree planting in Madagascar uh, next. So, so I guess Madagascar, instead of 2.4 billion trees is aiming for a more reasonable 60 million trees. Madagascar launched a national drive on January 19th that aims to plant 60 million trees in the coming months to mark 60 years of independence in the hope of restoring the island's forest. Yes, uh, so far this century, Madagascar has lost about one-fifth of its tree cover. Now, I'm assuming what they mean is one-fifth 
of the tiny remnant of the native forest that were still there in the year 2000. I don't want you to I don't want you to think for one minute that what they're saying there uh, is that 80% uh, of Madagascar's uh, forests are still remaining. No, there is like 80% of 3%. Uh, anyway, they should uh, really uh, correct that. Uh, this forest loss, like up there in the Congo, was driven primarily by the expansion of shifting agriculture, meaning the planet nibblers going in there and clearing the little bit of land that the planet eaters left behind. Experts say the real challenge for the campaign is in safeguarding the young trees by weaning the local people away from unsustainable agricultural practices and reducing their dependence on wood for charcoal. This is exactly what's going to happen to these 60 million trees. They're simply going to be cut down for firewood and charcoal in a few years. This is the very same thing that happened in Costa Rica uh, and is happening. You know, Costa Rica, you know, bragging 30 years ago about how they were reforesting uh, the country. But uh, what happened to all those trees they planted about 30 years ago, those 60 million trees or whatever, they got cut down when, when they were about 15 or 20 years old. This whole tree planting thing, uh, it, 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 it's a bunch of BS, people. Uh, you, you know, uh, <laughs> tree planting as soon as the trees get big enough to be to be burned uh, or used for firewood or lumber, they're just going to get cut down again. Anyway, let's go uh, over to Peru and look at black market anchovies. Uh, report details Peru's illegal fish meal industry. Peru is the world's leading producer of fish meal uh, made from anchovies. The fish meal is used primarily as feed for aquaculture and livestock. Uh, it's unclear precisely how much of this... Um, is going on because a sizable portion appears to be off the books. Hmm. Some 22,000 tons of fish meal, I guess is their best estimate, are produced annually by illegal factories uh, in southern Peru. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, where this stuff is going is to all of these fish farms. Uh, you know, guys, there, there's no way to win. Uh, you know, the UN, one of their, part of their sustainable development goals is, is, is to uh, increase fish farming on the planet. But of course, what do you think the farmed fish are eating? They're eating wild fish. It's, it's as much a BS as this tree planting. Uh, anyway, um, let's see. What, uh, here's another story on the Amazon jungles Munduruka tribe uh, getting screwed every uh, seven ways to Sunday. Um, this is yet another one of these giant mega dams, the Telus Pures Dam in the Brazilian 
uh, Amazon, the hydroelectric company, dynamited a sacred site of the Munduruko. Yes. Uh, the construction of the dam and destruction of the sacred site both occurred without prior consultation of the Munduruku tribe as required under law. Ha! Anyway, imagine that. Here, okay. Argentina has created a new national park as the forest disappears. Um, this is, I love it, Argentina's impenetrable national park. I predict that Argentina's impenetrable national park is already being penetrated. The park is home to an estimated 600 species of vertebrates, including jaguars and giant anteaters. Uh, it is located in the Gran Chaco eco region. The Chaco is one of the most deforested areas on the planet, losing more than 7 million acres uh, between 20 and 2018. Argentina is home to 60% of the forest, but is the site of 80% of Chaco deforestation as farmers clear more and more land for cattle and soy, and park officials in the Impenetrable National Park, park officials in the Impenetrable National Park <coughs> say hunting in the Impenetrable Park is taking a toll on wildlife, and satellite imagery, imagery reveals wildfires burned through more than 2,500 acres of the park last year. Okay, from the not-so-impenetrable impenetrable National Park in, uh, in, in Argentina, what's going on with the baby whales off the coast of the state of Georgia, right here in the good old uh, United States of America, one of four North Atlantic right whale calves spotted so far this breeding season has been struck by a ship. Hmm, imagine that. One of just four North Atlantic right whale calves spotted off the southeast coast of the U.S. so far this winter was discovered last week to have suffered deep propeller wounds to both sides of its head. The injured calf was photographed about eight miles off the state of Georgia. Uh, the gashes were most likely caused by the propeller of a boat, but humans will probably not be able to intervene and save the baby whale. So, uh, so much for that baby whale. The North Atlantic right whale population has been on the decline since uh, 2010, due almost entirely to the impacts of humans, especially collisions with ships and entanglements in fishing gear. All right. Uh, let's see. I love it when they ask a question. What is needed to keep Sri Lanka's leopards roaming free? Well, other than making Sri Lanka a human exclusion zone, there is nothing 
to keep Sri Lanka's leopards roaming free. Here is yet the latest leopard murdered inside a national park. Uh, Sri Lanka is fast losing its leopard population estimated to be around 1,000 at present. Uh, going back to Brazil, uh, we're looking at conflicts erupting in the Chico Mendes Reserve. Yes, imagine that. Um, a bill in the House of Representatives proposes that areas used for irregular cattle farming be removed from the park's perimeter, effectively legalizing cattle ranching inside the protective, protected reserve. Yes. Imagine that, and I'm going to end up, I'm going to pass the baton over to uh, Sandy Shellis at, uh, at Environmental Coffee House, did a whole video uh, on this. You can find her fine uh, coverage of this story over at Environmental Coffee House. I'm just going to read the recap to close out this chronicle of the collapse. A new dawn, the story of deforestation in the next decade must be different to the last one. Mm -hmm. 2020 was to be the year when the bold commitments made by hundreds of companies to eliminate deforestation from their supply chains was met. Hmm. Instead, the failure to achieve this goal can be measured by the sharp rise in deforestation since 2014. Yet, despite this bleak picture, and the need to act being more urgent than ever now, there is another story to tell about the last decade. <clears throat> it is the story of how these pledges to eliminate deforestation from supply chain by 2020 was doomed to fail. Yes. It is also, perhaps surprisingly, about the immense journey some companies, environmental organizations, and institutions have made in that time, and how the path to remove the stain of deforestations, deforestation from the products we consume is now clearer than ever. Yes, it is. But anyway, you can go over to Environmental Coffee House and let Sandy Shellis uh, take over from there. But I got to wrap up this week's Manga Bay Roundup of uh, threats against this planet because I have to get to my planet eating bank to put my earnest money deposit down. Uh, on my waterfront lot in Florida, if you uh, if you enjoyed, I guess if that's the right word, uh, this Manga Bay Roundup, please take a few seconds to give a few thumbs up to Rhett Butler and the folks at Manga Bay for their hard work. If you did not like what Manga Bay had to tell you, thumb it down and please. Uh, subscribe to Collapse Chronicles while you're still over here and uh, get out there and enjoy this collapsing civilization and planet while you still can. Are you ready to go uh, enjoy the collapse of global industrial civilization while you still can, Sancho Panza? Bye, guys.